So number one, I try and have everybody get rid of all social media on their phone. Yay. And they're like, but I, but it's for work, right? So deleting Facebook now is super easy because they have the groups app. So you, if you have, even if you have a paid for group, you have no excuse, by the way. Uh, and Messenger, you're like, oh, but I get message. No excuses. So you can actually delete the entire app. The only thing that you can't get is events and you can do that on the main page. So not only on your phone, and I suggest everybody do it right now. When I was speaking in Bangkok, actually, Liam, I made everybody hold up their phone. And then I was like, now delete Facebook. And only about maybe 10 people out of the whole audience did it. But, but those 10 people are action takers. So we do that right now. Then there's another, I was telling you about the plugin, which I'm sure you already know about, called Newsfeed Eradicator. Now, this one is for Chrome. Um, and we have a link that just sort of goes to that. You install it. It will take away the newsfeed on Facebook because... If you're a business owner, even if you're supposed to be in Facebook, I know I have paid for groups. I would get so distracted being like, oh, and then so this happened. <gasps> and then I wouldn't realize that 20 minutes went by or even 10 minutes. And those things add up like crazy. So when you use Newsfeed Eradicator, it puts a lovely little quote about time and how important time is in the Newsfeed instead, which means you can get to the events, which is awesome, without getting distracted from all the crazy people saying stuff. So that's number one. All right, I'm just gonna, you don't have to say anything, Liam. I'm just gonna go through everything. You can just sit there and look pretty, okay? I think, I think, right. I think I'm, I'm just in shock, like everyone else just watching, just like, really, is she, is she serious? Like, do I really delete my Facebook, my Instagram, my Snapchat, my Twitter? Yes, right? <laughs> So now that being said, I, I use Instagram for my own personal, I don't have any business, anything on Instagram. It's mostly my friends. So I keep that one for me. But, but in general, for anything in business, I try not to use Instagram at all during my work times. Because, well, I'll explain a little bit more how my, I'm a, as efficient as humanly possible. Okay, so that's number one. Highly recommend it, even if you only do it for a week, two weeks. I usually say at least 30 days for everybody. Like, just trust me for 30 days. If you don't like it, you can add it back in, no big deal. Everybody thanks me afterwards. Nobody wants to get kicked, but they're happy that they got pushed in the right direction. So that's number one. You guys should all have create like a support group of, oh, I don't have social media on my phone support group after this. Okay, so that's number one. <laughs> number two group is- on, on Facebook groups because we still have the Facebook groups. <laughs> yeah. okay. We'll use the app separate. That's fine. I know. You can talk to his people, but that's it. Okay, is that better? Does that help, help you? Okay. <laughs> So number two is I feel like we live in an information overload age. You've probably heard this before also. So it's one thing to consume a lot of information and then use it. It's another thing to consume a lot of information, assuming that you will remember it for when you need it for next time. And our brains are not good at that at all. We can't remember the podcast we listened to six months ago about webinars when we're writing about webinars right now, right? So what I ask is all my clients have to stop listening to podcasts, stop reading articles, unless they can use it within that week, maybe two weeks, depending on how big of a project they're doing. Because what we have a tendency to do is just overconsume. And when we do that, it, it, that being said, everybody's like, well, what about like the, the entertainment podcast? You can listen to entertainment podcasts when you are exercising or when you're in a car and you're driving. Okay. And that's actually when I suggest you actually listen to the stuff that is pertinent. So I'm not saying if you are writing your new webinar that you can't go look up the best podcasts, the newest ones about how to write your newest webinar. That's totally fine. But listen to it, you know, when you're actually paying attention, not just having it in the background. Um, and don't just make sure that when you're actually doing it, you take action on it. Otherwise, we are filling our brains with all sorts of ideas. And I know entrepreneurs like the back of my hand, number one, I am one, so I have a crazy entrepreneur brain also. And we have to mitigate our own uh, opportunity. <laughs> like we, uh, so one of the things that one of my mentors said is we need to determine the difference between an opportunity and a distraction. And that's huge, right? So we get listened to all these podcasts or content and we're like, oh, but then I could do this, and then I could do this. None of that matters, of course, you can do everything. You're amazing and smart. And we only have so much time, and that's what this uh, whole thing is all about. So what we're trying to do is just become more efficient um, with the time. So well, that's number two. Sorry to jump in on yes. that. Just what I'm yeah. thinking is there, like if, if people are uh, going ahead and they're, they're scheduling um, their weeks, their months, or theming their, you know, their days, their weeks, their months, their years, whatever it is, uh, and they're like, all right, I know this week I'm focusing on doing my uh, email sequences. So 
can they listen to, to podcasts that are specific to email sequences in terms of like, so what I'm thinking is that, of course, you know, everyone has their favorite, you know, people that they subscribe to and the channels. Uh, but what about actually going and actually searching? Because I don't feel That's that many people are actually searching for. Go search. Exactly. So this, is, so this is the thing. We usually have the people that we already know we like because we listen to them and we just listen to them because they're putting out content. But who knows if that's really relevant to you. So I say you search and you find the top three people or five people that you love and see if they actually did content about what you're actually learning about because, of course, you want to listen to their stuff over everyone else's. So I agree a thousand percent. You should, we should be using iTunes or Stitcher as a search engine for content not necessarily this is how tv works and we're just hitting play because it's there makes sense yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, like people i don't think are, are just searching enough and yeah 100 percent agreed as well <laughs> well we go through our apps and we're just like oh i have a po this one sounds interesting awesome maybe the copy you know of this specific one sounds like a clickable that doesn't necessarily mean it's helpful in any way at all and I actually found, and this is kind of sad, when I do search, there's not a lot on specific topics. There's tons of interview shows, uh, but there's not somebody going, this is how you should do webinars, go. Um, it's getting a little bit better nowadays, but that's actually an opportunity uh, in the market that I'm looking at also going, oh, we need to create some of this. Um, so that's number two. Number three, right? We're moving through fast, so we can ask, you can ask other questions uh, afterwards. But number three is we think we know what we're doing with the time that we have. Right? We're smart. We're like, I know what I'm doing. Like, I'm working my butt off. And <laughs> again, my clients hate me for this, especially this last one that I had a brand new guy raising $15 million for the timber industry, like crazy stuff. Um, I asked him to keep track of his time for between three days and a week, literally every second, pretty much. Uh, hence the reason why they hate me. I'm like, it'll be really, really, really painful for a couple of days. And if you can only do two, that's okay too. But we use toggle.com, T-O-G-G-L.com. So you can actually go ahead and post um, what you're doing when. So if you're doing email, and this is the thing that people get all the time, they're like, oh, I do email, but I hop in, I hop out, and you know, everybody's got hacks on email, boomerang and all sorts of stuff. But to me, we don't, we, we totally either underestimate or overestimate how much we're doing on email. So when you actually time it, you can see how long these things take you. So when we go over the whole week span, we try and be a lot more efficient. So you've heard of, of dump it, delegate it, do it. Like you've heard that sort of stuff before. So I, I'm able to look at the clear picture of what they did for the entire week and go, your assistant should be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. What the heck was that? That was crappy. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to get people more in the flow state, number one. Number two, we're trying to be more efficient. So if they have random meetings everywhere, this is what I was telling you about the master schedule.